Good morning, church. My name is Reverend Balan Moses. I will be bringing the word of God to you this morning. Let's start this time of worship with a word of prayer. Heavenly Father, gracious God, we come into your presence this morning, Father, to thank you, Father, for accepting us into your family through the rite of baptism, Father, so that we can all start enjoying the privileges that come from being members of your royal family, Father. Lord, we thank you for placing faith in us in our baptism. Help us to reignite that faith today, even as we face these challenging times. Bless us, bless our households, bless our church, bless our nation. All this we pray in your most holy and precious name. Amen.
I will bless the Lord at all times. His praise shall continually be in my mouth. O oh, magnify the Lord with me. Let us exalt his name together. Taste and see that the Lord is good. Happy is the man who takes refuge in him. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. The Old Testament reading for this morning is taken from Isaiah chapter 43, verses 1 to 3. But now thus says the Lord, who created you, O Jacob, and he who formed you, O Israel, Fear not, for I have redeemed you. I have called you by your name. You are mine. When you pass through the waters, I will be with you. And through the rivers, they shall not overflow you. When you walk through the fire, you shall not be burned, nor shall the flame scorch you. For I am the Lord your God, the Holy One of Israel, your Saviour. I gave Egypt for your ransom, Ethiopia and Seba in your place. Here ends the reading of the Old Testament. May the Lord add his blessings to the reading of his word. Amen. The epistle reading is taken from Romans chapter 6, verses 3 to 11. Know ye not that so many of us, as were baptized unto Jesus Christ, were baptized into his death? Therefore we are buried with him by baptism into death, that like as Christ was raised up from the dead by the glory of the Father, even so we should walk in newness of life. For if we have been planted together in the likeness of his death, we shall be also in the likeness of his resurrection. Knowing this, that our old man is crucified with him, that the body of sin might be destroyed, that henceforth we should not serve sin. For he that is dead is freed from sin. Now if we be dead with Christ, we believe that we shall also live with him. Knowing that Christ being raised from the dead dieth no more, death hath no more dominion over him. For in that he died, he died unto sin once. But he that liveth, he liveth unto God. Likewise, reckon ye yourselves to be dead unto sin, but alive unto God through Jesus Christ our Lord. Here ends the reading of the episode. May the Lord make his word bear fruit in our heart unto eternal life. Amen. The Gospel lesson for this morning is taken from the book of John chapter 3 verses 1 to 8 and I read the gospel from John chapter 3 verses 1 to 8 the new birth there was a man of the Pharisees named Nicodemus a ruler of the Jews this man came to Jesus by night and said to him rabbi we know that you are a teacher come from God for no one can do these signs that you do unless God is with him. Jesus answered and said to him, Most assuredly, I say to you, unless one is born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. Nicodemus said to him, How can a man be born when he is old? Can he enter a second time into his mother's womb and be born? Verse 5, Jesus answered, Most assuredly I say to you, unless one is born of water and the Spirit, he cannot enter the kingdom of God. Verse 6, That which is born of the flesh is flesh, and that which is born of the Spirit is spirit. Do not marvel that I said to you, you must be born again. The wind blows where it wishes, and you hear the sound of it, 
but cannot tell where it comes from and where it goes. So is everyone who is born of the Spirit. Here ends the reading of the Holy Gospel. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit, let us pray. Father, we praise you, we thank you for this day. Thank you a lot, Almighty God, O Father, that we can still meet, O Father, online, O Father, to praise you and glorify you. We surrender, Father, every part of the service into your hands. In Jesus' name, we give thanks and we pray. Amen.
Grace and peace be unto you from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, gracious God, we come to you once again, Father, to ask for your Holy Spirit to bless the word which I'm about to bring to your people, Father. Let this word, Father, about baptism find fertile soil in our hearts, Father, so that it can take root and bear fruits, Father. Thank you for the members and worshippers of Good Hope Church, Betaling Jaya. Father, we pray, Father, that your Holy Spirit will be with all of us, even as we walk through these very difficult times, Father. Thank you, Jesus. All this we pray in your most holy and precious name. Amen. <clears throat> Good morning, church. Uh, today's theme is our baptism. Now, the word baptism is very often uh, not in our Christian vocabulary. We find more talk about faith, about grace, about be belief. But the word baptism, many may think, um, only happened when we were babies or for those who went through adult baptism in our baptism rite of baptism and our understanding and i speak very generally here is that baptism was confined to the time the pastor <coughs> uh, sprinkled <coughs> water on our heads as babies and then suddenly we were baptized. The pastor would normally, and I normally do this, explain baptism by way of saying that in baptism, we become members of the family of Christ. It's very true. The question is then asked, is baptism essential for salvation? <clears throat> Now, the Lutheran Church doesn't insist that you must be baptized to enter into the kingdom of heaven. But it helps. It helps, certainly. Because if you have the opportunity <clears throat> to obtain the protection of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, and the Holy Spirit, through this rite of baptism, why don't we do it? And so our parents, for those who of us who were baptized as kids, as babies, took the initiative because they, they knew the significance of baptism. I'll come to that shortly. In baptism, we are given our Christian names. Names actually uh, really don't matter in, the, in, the, in, in salvation. Right? Names don't matter. God knows our names. If we were born and somebody called us, the family called us by a certain name and at baptism, sometimes baptism is delayed for a few months, uh, a new name was given to us. God knows us even by the old name because these are the names, whatever names we are called, that are recorded in the book of life. So, in baptism, as babies, we are given a baptismal name. Huh? Normally, it's a Christian name. Now, what does baptism signify? Firstly, it signifies entry into the family of God. Secondly, and I think very importantly, many don't know this, is that at baptism, faith is placed in our hearts. At baptism, we are babies. We don't know what faith is. In fact, we will Google, we'll, uh, we'll gurgle and make baby sounds. That's the extent of our comprehension and speech. But miraculously, faith is placed by God in our hearts. And that faith grows as we grow. And that is why we read the Bible to our babies, our young children, when we have family prayer and, and everything is done, children are included. 
the family daily night prayer or morning prayer is not only for adults it's for everyone in the household children grow up from baby uh, status to toddlers to uh, young kids and then to teen preteens teenagers etc hearing the word of god in the bible tells us that faith increases when you hear the word of god amen faith increases as you hear the word of god and that is why uh, if we are people of faith today this faith was placed in us in baptism and so we must thank god today as adults we must thank god for placing that faith in us at baptism what a wonderful uh, moment that would have been uh, when in a miracle God places faith in us and then we grow the faith grows by hearing the word of God now baptism is also called a means of grace a means a way to obtain God's grace now in the Lutheran uh, tradition there are three means of grace one is baptism where god extends his goodness and his grace to us from babies to the uh, very uh, elderly people baptism is one means of grace so if you are baptized we are recipients of god's grace free given freely by god that is what is enabling us to be uh, alive and kicking and healthy during these COVID times most of us the second means of grace is the word of god through which grace comes to us by reading and hearing the word of god god's grace comes to us through his word and thirdly another means of grace is holy communion when we take the body and blood of christ his grace comes to us through his body and blood through the eucharist so baptism is a means of god's grace coming into our lives we have seen so far how baptism has actually affected our lives from the times we we were babies so I pray that all of you listening to this sermon will sit up and say, Hey, baptism is so important for every believer. But, as I said just now, it's not crucial. It's not vital for salvation. The opportunity is given to us as parents, as grandparents, to ensure that the, the children, the grandchildren of ours are baptized in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. When the pastor performs the rite of baptism, he does it in these three names, in the name of God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. And in addition, the Bible says, you have to have water that's why the pastor would sprinkle some water on our heads for those who want immersion baptism nothing wrong for a very long time uh, conservative lutherans and uh, conservative orthodox protestants protested against immersion baptism said no 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 why you want to immerse of course it was a bit of a chore for the pastor because in immersion baptism the pastor gets into the water with the person to be baptized a bit messy yeah? but be that as it may nothing wrong with immersion baptism that's how in the early church people were baptized we hear of how uh, uh, Lydia was baptized by Paul. Paul baptizes Lydia, a woman of God, a deacon of those days. Eh? She was not a Christian. So Paul goes to Lydia's 
town and she is known as a very faithful uh, daughter of God. Remember, I'm not saying Jesus. At that point, she had not known Jesus yet. And what Paul does, he is taken by the Holy Spirit to where Lydia is gathered with a group of holy women, women of God, and they are praying. And Paul talks to Lydia and he preaches the gospel of Jesus Christ to Lydia. And Lydia, led by the Holy Spirit, accepts the gospel of Christ. Remember, in, the, in those early days for adults, the prophets, the apostles, delivered the gospel first, and then baptism took place. And then Lydia is baptized. And I'm sure she was a leader of the, the, the community of, of, uh, of believers there. I'm sure many others were also baptized. The Bible doesn't say that. Yeah? Only Lydia. And then what happens? Lydia invites Paul to her home. Lydia is a rich person. She used to sell uh, purple uh, cloth huh? or purple dye and cloth. The dye was obtained from seashells that were purple in color and they were very expensive. That dye was very expensive. She was a rich lady. So Lydia invites Paul to her house to make it his headquarters. And that's where the church began because of one baptized person, Lydia. Lydia was activated by the Holy Spirit through the name of Jesus to share the gospel of Christ. She had the means, she had money, and so she invested in the gospel. All her money went to looking after her household and looking after the gospel of Christ. The other instance of where someone was uh, baptized uh, was where uh, Paul and Silas are in jail. Around midnight, they are praying and singing songs of praise to God when an earthquake takes place. And the Bible tells us the gates of that cell, the cell doors rather, were opened by the shock of the uh, earthquake the jailer rushes there to see if they have escaped seeing that the door of the gate of the jail are open he takes out his sword to kill himself because the roman uh, people romans in charge of the jail would have killed him for allowing the prisoners paul and silas to escape and paul and silas seeing the jailer say don't don't do anything rash. We are here. And then he is amazed. And I suppose the conversation would have been, why are you here? And Paul and Silas, led by the Holy Spirit, explain the gospel of Jesus Christ to the jailer. And the Bible tells us, the jailer and his household were baptized the jailer and his household household means uh, jailer's father mother his uh, wife his uh, children and those days the household included the servants and the head of the house dictated the religion of the household everyone's religion the head of the household dictated and so the babies the little children the toddlers were all baptized and this is why the church from those days from the early days believes and believe that children babies need to be baptized and have the faith in God installed in their hearts and then they will grow in faith by hearing the word of God Second example of a baptism taking place in the New Testament. A third example, which 
all these examples have to tell us something. Huh? The, sen the, the, the jailer, I am sure, would have shared the gospel of Christ with all those working with him, with his neighbors, because he saw a miracle. And when the gospel of Christ was explained to him, he accepted Jesus. He was never the same person again, I am sure. He would have been changed, transformed by the gospel of Christ, by Jesus Christ himself. And he would have become a new, transformed person with the intention and aim of sharing the gospel of Christ with everyone who didn't know Christ. Same thing would have happened with Lydia. Remember, her house was used as the new headquarters for, for Paul to share the gospel. Third example is the Ethiopian eunuch who was coming from Ethiopia, a country in Africa, thousands of miles away from Jerusalem. He was a believer in God. We don't know whether he was a Jew. He could have been. He could have been an Ethiopian Jew who believed in God. He had come. He was a religious man. He had come to Jerusalem on a pilgrimage to Jerusalem. And now he was going back to his home country, Ethiopia. And he was on a chariot, the Bible tells us. And then what happens? The Holy Spirit speaks to Philip, Apostle Philip. And tells him there is someone who needs to hear the gospel of Jesus Christ. Go and minister to him. And Philip, the Bible tells us, goes to see the eunuch. And he sees this eunuch. He is on his chariot. Uh, he is reading from the book of Isaiah. And he is reading about the foretelling of the birth of Jesus and the, the life of Jesus, how he would be tortured and he would not complain and he would die. And the gates of hell could not hold him. All this is contained in those verses from the book of Isaiah chapter 53. And this eunuch is reading the word of God and he really doesn't understand. So Philip walks or, or runs uh, or jogs alongside the chariot and asks the eunuch, what are you doing? And the eunuch says, I'm reading uh, from the ancient scriptures. And Philip asks him, do you understand what you're reading? And the eunuch says, how can I understand? There's no one to explain this to me. And the Bible says, Philip, explain the gospel of Christ. To the eunuch. The eunuch heard Philip out. See again, huh? before baptism, the gospel of Christ is explained to whoever is going to be baptized. And then the eunuch, on hearing of Jesus, I'm sure Philip would have told him about baptism, how important baptism is. To be baptized in the name of Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. The eunuch asked Philip, there's some running water beside us. What is to stop me from being baptized right now? You see, the urgency is there. The urgency to be baptized. The urgency to come under the protection of God. Be a, an adopted member of his family. And so Philip goes into the water. Uh, here is another case of immersion baptism here. Yeah? And baptizes the eunuch. And the Bible says, as soon as they came out of the water, the Spirit of God took away Philip mysteriously. He vanished. The eunuch, the Bible says, went back joyfully remember this word eh? joyfully full of joy of of happiness full of grace he would have gone back to ethiopia 
and shared the gospel of Christ. Now he understood what he was reading earlier. Earlier he didn't understand. Now the Holy Spirit through baptism explains through Philip what he had been reading that the gospel of Jesus Christ, Jesus Christ was the Savior sent by God for the eunuch, for all of us. And so, brothers and sisters in Christ, we see the significance of baptism in all our lives. So how is baptism relevant to us today? Earlier I said it's not a forgotten event. It's an active event even today in our lives. All of those who were baptized were energized by baptism. Remember, Jesus Christ was baptized by John the Baptist. And he went into the water and he, emer he emerged and a dove came and settled on his shoulder. And a voice from heaven, the God the Father said to him, told everyone there, This is my beloved Son in whom I am well pleased. And then what happens after Jesus' baptism? He's energized by the power of the Holy Spirit. He goes out and he shares the gospel with everyone. His ministry, his three-year ministry, begins after his baptism. And for three years, Jesus shared the knowledge of God with everyone else and who he was. He was the Son of God sent to save the people of that time and today. Brothers and sisters in Christ, baptism is a very often a misunderstood uh, topic. I pray that this brief uh, meditation on baptism will be of some help to all of us, even as we follow the Great Commission, Go ye therefore and make disciples of all nations baptizing them in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Baptism. Last words of Jesus, mind you, before he ascends to heaven, Jesus talks about baptism. See how important baptism is. Again, I bring you in closing the example of the thief on the cross. Was he baptized? There's a a chorus of no pastor. He was not baptized because Jesus extended his grace to that man one to one on his last in his last time hours or minutes on earth. Jesus extended his grace to that thief on the cross. And Jesus tells him today. You shall be with me in paradise when you die right now in the next few minutes or in the next few hours. You will come to heaven. Salvation is yours. No baptism. But that shows the power, the majesty and might of Jesus Christ. He is God, Son of God, Deity. So let no one bind us to one mode of baptism. I've said this before. In the desert during the Kuwait War in the early 90s, a, a, a soldier in the midst of all that death and calamity and injury wanted to be baptized. There was no water. There was no running water like the eunuch had. There was no pond. There was nothing. All they had was bottles of mineral water. And what happens? The chaplain of that uh, battalion takes a bottle of water, pours it on the head of the soldier and proclaims, I baptize you in the name of the Father, of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. The word of God was there. Water was there. 
the person to be baptized was there. And so a baptism took place in the middle of an arid desert where no water was. So everything is in the hands of God Almighty. I pray God bless you all, that the word of God brought to you today will bear fruit in your hearts. Go forth, be energized, and help pastors baptize in the name of God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. Amen. Praise God from whom all blessings flow. Praise Him, all creatures here below. Praise Him above, ye heavenly host. Praise Father, Son, and Holy prayer. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name, your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil. For yours is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. The salutation and benediction. Please stand. The Lord be with you together and with you also. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. Amen. 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 God bless you all. Sing unto the Lord a new song. Sing unto the Lord all the earth. Sing unto the Lord a new song. Sing unto the Lord all the earth. Sing unto the Lord a new song. Sing unto the Lord all the earth. Oh, sing unto the Lord a new song. Sing unto the Lord all the earth. For God is great. Greatly to be praised and godly great and greatly to be praised. Sing unto the Lord a new song. Sing unto the Lord of the earth. Oh, oh, sing unto the Lord a new song. Sing unto the Lord of the earth. Sing unto the Lord. To the Lord of the earth, oh, sing unto the Lord a new song. Sing unto the Lord of the earth. For God is great, greatly to be praised, and God is great and greatly to be praised. Sing unto the Lord. Sing unto the Lord 